Welcome back. So we made it to the end of the year. I think everyone is getting burnt out on work, on holidays. Um, some of us are getting burnt out on doing wired IAM reviews. So I thought we'd switch it up for something a little more lighthearted, maybe a little more fun. Talk about a pair of wireless um, Bluetooth headphones that I got the other day. And um, those are the Yin Yu Q70s. But the story actually begins from an ad on Facebook for a company called Next Audio. It's on here somewhere. So Next Audio, you'll see this ad on Facebook. It says, oh, Next Audio, here's our headphones. They are Qualcomm 3020s, AptX, the whole deal. So followed through, went through on Amazon, bought them, um, received them, and... It says, oh, they're Yinyu. They're actually Yinyu Q70s. So if you go back on Amazon and look for Yinyu Q70s, they're actually, you know, $2 cheaper. Um, and they're actually from Yinyu themselves. Or you can go to AliExpress and save yourself $12 and buy the same Yinyu Q70s. So um, for those of you who've watched a few of my videos, you know, the new audio store on Amazon has sent me some headphones, and uh, this was not one of those. Um, this one was pretty accidental. I didn't even know it was the Inu until I got the box and opened it. And like, oh, I probably should have just called them instead of going roundabout through Next Audio. But um, lessons learned, and uh, so I sort of chose these. Um, it's sort of a good primer because last week. I talked about the feel or the fill T1X, and I mistakenly said these were AptX, which they are not. Yet people are still talking about them and love them, so um, I will still stick. I will double down and say that um, these things are doing pretty well on the hype train, and people are still really, really liking them. It's kind of come down to Liberty Pro 2s and the T1Xs are kind of the two that are getting talked about, and one's a hundred and something dollars, and this is thirty to forty dollar ish. But um, so yeah, sorry, not Aptex, but still great sounding pair um, if you're in the market, something to look at. So the NU Q70s are not your traditional um, earbud. So these are more like um, AirPods, AirPod ish kind of a half breed in between a typical earbud and uh, an AirPod. So if you haven't been in the TWS um, market lately, so your typical earbuds kind of look like this. Um, they are sort of bean shaped, tablet shaped, whatever you want to call that. Um, they sort of sit right outside your ear and this is a little ear hook to um, pop them in and secure them inside your ear. Um, these are more reminiscent of AirPods, um, but they don't exactly, you know, dangle from your ear as nicely as um, AirPods do. So, rule number one on any TWS that you might get, you can see that I took off the um, tips. So, first thing I do when I buy a pair is um, put on some KZ tips. And um, so that will get you pretty much all the bass. And in, ca in the case of these guys, uh, too much bass. But um, that is the first thing you need to do because the ones that come with, that ship with it are going to be garbage. And um, so rule number one, put on new tips. And then you'll see that it no longer fits into the case properly to charge. So you'll have to deal with that. Um, so that's rule number one. So rule number two is sort of what I just talked about was this is the Q70 that was advertised by Next Audio. It's actually the Yinyu Q70. There's this whole game of different companies putting their names on the same pair of Bluetooth headphones. And uh, so here's another version. Um, this is actually a clone of, um, I think this was the SSK UFO style. And um, this is the 
Yin, Yin Mi. And everyone thought it was a clone of, S, of SSK. Um, it was not. Still sounds pretty good, but um, if you actually did a Google search on this shape case or these shape earbuds, you'd basically run into, you know, five or ten different companies who all sold the same looking case and earbuds. Um, some of those were the same, some of those were not. So be careful of that. Um, or use it to your advantage and try to figure out if the cheaper version. So in this case, um, the the actual Yinu were two dollars cheaper than the next audio ones, but um, can't do too much about that other than um, do a whole bunch of research if you're that motivated. So as I said, so these are Qualcomm's thirty twenty chips with AptX and. CVC 8.0, which is their in-call noise cancellation technology. Um, these also do low latency for you guys who like to watch videos. Um, I didn't thoroughly test it, but um, pretty good on the Q70s. I didn't have a problem with uh, Netflix or YouTube. But um, traditionally, people haven't... There's not tons of um, $30 to $40 price range um, Bluetooth headphones with the 3020 because you have to license that from Qualcomm and that adds to the cost and then You find yourself above 30 or 40 dollars. So um, These are the real deal and uh, they are aptX and um, If you're not familiar with aptX versus AAC the two those are the two popular codecs and then there's SBC which SBC is the one codec that is sort of universal to Bluetooth 5.0 It's found on I think anything that has to support Bluetooth 5.0, then there's um, the iPhone favorite AAC, and then Qualcomm and Android users typically look for AptX, but um, you typically find more SBC. Um, the cheaper they go, the more likely it's going to be SBC. Then AAC is sort of where you get um, decent sound in that $30 range. And then finding AptX, like when I said this one was AptX and people get excited, um, yeah, because it's a little harder to find Aptex, especially in this price range. So um, that was yet another reason for picking these guys out. And uh, second, the, um, the shape of it. Some people aren't a fan of just having the buds. Um, I was a fan of the buds. Um, but then I got these and I'm like, yeah, we'll give this a shot. And uh, they sound really good. Really good for, you know, if you can get them on AliExpress for 30 bucks. Um, they are really good. So let's kind of talk about what this, how they sound. And so before we get into that, I do have a quick graph. The guys from the phonograph, um, super nice enough to do a graph of the Inu Q70s. And um, it's actually pretty flat. Um, I guess what most people would see is, is this huge drop off. And um, if you actually go back and look, read the review, they will say the same thing that I will say is it doesn't sound nearly as bad as it looks. Um, I think this is sort of a weird measuring calibration, how Bluetooth does roll offs, you know, because this is essentially doing a digital analog conversion. And I'm not sure they really capture that in the low frequencies. As these get lower and lower, the, as the quantity gets lower and lower, I'm not sure that these properly convert that back into an analog signal. That's kind of my guesstimate of what it does because we'll talk about some of the details that get lost. And I think I think some of that is is kind of what you're seeing here, and it's just kind of connecting the dots of maybe where it got the last one or where it, where it guesstimated it was going to. But um, so the base is actually stronger than this looks at all. Like this looks like there's almost no sub bass, but um, it actually is bass wise actually quite strong. So let's and um, so for thirty dollars these are I would call them quite bassy but controlled um, despite that roll off that you see. And why that makes a difference, especially in this price range, is that most of them either have some bass or have no bass. But not many of them actually have a control base that sounds reasonable, something that resembles a wired IM. And uh, you'll see tons of $30 ones that 
will do something with the base, but it ends up being like a mushy, spongy, um, almost no shape to it at all. And these kind of approach what people would call like that KZ bass, kind of that one note, bassy, but it's one note. There's not enough texture. And um, that's what these, these kind of approach that level of bass. So if you'd like that, that KZ sound, um, these are kind of right up rally, and that's kind of why I like them, because they, they sort of do resemble um, that KZ sound for me a bit. Um, so there's a new song, The Hype by 21 Pilots. If you um, listen to that on your wired IEMs and listen to that bass, it's actually sort of rises above the level probably where it should on these guys, especially with these KZ, the star tips. Um, so it definitely, it definitely falls into that basic category where the bass has a, a nice boost to it. And you, you could definitely hear it on that, on that song, which isn't particularly, you know, it's not EDM or anything, but listen to the bass line on that song. Um, and sort of along with that is, I forgot to talk about, so the midsection, so in general on TWS, there's generally this either flat or slightly elevated midsection. And um, that sort of goes in line with what, what their mission statement was with this product was it's, it's for music, but people also do watch movies, play games, listen to podcasts. So it's actually kind of handy to have that whole midsection boosted a little bit so you don't have to play around with the volume every time you're, listening, you're watching a movie and there's some quiet dialogue, you don't have to sit there and hit the volume like I used to on my old Windows tablets were the worst. Like you're trying to, trying to you put some nice headphones on this, you know, semi crappy tablet and you end up, you know, your volume is at like 80% trying to hear the dialogue, and then there'll be some action and then you're immediately putting it back down and then it's going back up and down. So these guys sort of, almost all of them, generally kind of boost that midsection for that reason, just so you sort of have this one signature that works across all these different types of uses. So um, yeah, don't be, if you're partial to having a, a more neutral sound, you're, not, you're gonna have a hard time finding a TDO, TWS that is more neutral. Um, it's just the way that most of them sound these days. So, Details getting lost. Um, so anything Adele, hello, any quiet vocal where you're used to hearing those tiny reverberations on her voice, those all kind of either get clipped or cut off. Um, it's kind of a across the board. You very rarely have anything that, you know, this is what, $30, $40. But if you listen to a KZ ZSM Pro, you'll probably hear more detail. I can almost guarantee you'll hear more detail. And I think that sort of does come down to how much volume you have, how much digital signal to analog this is actually passing through. Um, there's some magic there that's kind of beyond the codec of when those really tiny, low-level sounds get passed through and when they don't. But uh, you'll notice some things popping in and out. And um, But if you're expecting you know, that beautiful vocal and all the tiny reverberations, you're probably not going to get that at $30. Um, so these guys have a very warm, kind of a rounded sound. Round sounds definitely sound better on this guy than hard sounds, and we'll get to the hard edges in a bit. So cool, couple cool songs. Head Over Heels by Japanese Breakfast, Mad World by Tears for Fears. So both of those are sort of lower, I mean, Tears of Fears is a male vocal. So in that, like male vocals sound particularly better on this than female vocals, especially in that higher range, with, which I would call that kind of a harder edge versus that male vocal, which is kind of more rounded. Those are definitely more suited towards this sound signature. But um, Dot of Life's USA version of um, Totally forgot the name of that song. Rage. Something about Rage. I'll put it in the comments. But um, so these guys will rock out pretty good. Um, surprisingly good. Um, I was really into it. 
really into that song. I haven't heard that song in a while. Um, there's the USA version, and there's the other version, which has Sebastian Bach in it, which isn't uh, nearly as good. But, um, yeah, I was kind of surprised that they they rock out pretty good. That was a nice surprise. Um, but I would avoid sort of the hard edges, industrial sounds. So Kanye West from that album, Beautiful Nightmare, whatever it was called, All the Lights, Power, Nine Inch Nails, Hurt, um, even kind of stepping into Lena Grammer's Hey Now. There's a couple, like her voice and some of the sounds are a little industrial. All those things that have hard edges just sound kind of weird on Bluetooth. And um, if you've ever used a Bluetooth headphone, you know, from years ago, and you knew they always have a problem like translating people's voices so they sound exactly like their voice. It's sort of that problem of you're going from an analog to a digital to an analog again. And I think it kind of gets lost. And I think some of those hard edges get kind of get compressed out, bit rated out, whatever you want to call it. So um, kind of avoid that type of music. So the treble is uh, polite, but it really lacks power. This, these are single dynamic drivers. Um, pretty much everything in that price range is going to be about the same. So if you listen to something like Dead Mouse's Strobe and it's got these big strings, um, you'll hear them. They sound okay, but they don't really, they're not powerful. They're not impactful. Um, but at the same time, they don't get screechy or there's no weird spikes to them. So polite, which is, which is pretty good on a long, on a long um, listening session. And I think in general, that's probably another a kind of across the board at thirty dollars range. You're gonna, they're either gonna roll off the highs or they're going to be super polite. You're not really gonna have spikes. No one is really tweaking the treble on a thirty dollar Bluetooth headset to you know try to get that last bit of detail out of the treble. That just doesn't necessarily happen off that often. So they will definitely be um, more on the roll off, polite, um, keep the treble um, in check lane so i think that's about it on these guys um so you know if you have any general questions on tws in general you can try to ask but that's it's a bit like the wild west right now there's just so many different new ones each one is slightly different None of them really sound the same as or as good as your ZSN Pro. They're kind of approaching it, but not quite there. So it's, so for me, it's sort of fun, but it's really hard to do a critical review of something that you know costs $10 more than the ZSN Pro or the DT6 Pro, but doesn't quite have the sound quality that those have. So these are... These are what I use outside for yard work or for traveling or, you know, you're sitting on the airplane, you want to watch a movie and listen to music and listen to a podcast. This is what I take with me. But um, so that's it. Thank you guys for tuning in and I will see you next time.